this is the year Israel turns 70. Celebrations big and boisterous. Hallelujah! President Trump's decision to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, seen by some Israelis as another reason to celebrate. So just what is happening in Israel right now? As elsewhere in the world, there's been a shift in the way politics is communicated. New radical voices are being heard. And boy, are they noisy. This is the new word, the new media. New media, says a government minister, as I took a behind-the-scenes look at Israel's latest TV phenomenon. This news bulletin on Channel 20 was launched early this year after a long battle in the courts. Other TV channels have protested that it would not be objective. I met Shimon Ricklin while he was doing his makeup. For many Israelis, he's an incendiary figure, well known for his advocacy in building West Bank settlement. We make history. You make history? We, our channel, make an history in Israel, yes, sure. Yeah? Yeah. Because it's the first time that this channel this bulletin has been approved, right? It's approved uh, after so many years. They let to people from the right wing to speak. Beginning with the show's host, Ariel Segal, the first thing you notice is the shouting. On tonight's panel, female broadcaster Dana Spector takes on the hard line right wingers. There seemed to be a lot of shouting going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's all that about? What were you? We are Jewish. We are like to argue every time. Yeah, and and even we agree, we shout. Do you see yourselves as a kind of fox? Like yeah, yeah. I definitely think that our our goal is to be some kind of fox news. Donald Trump's ongoing problems with former FBI Director James Comey come up for discussion. Ricklin defends Trump. When the shooting of Gaza protesters is discussed, tempers fray. Dana Spector says the targeted Palestinians are genuine protesters. Incensed by his words, she hits back. I don't put a mask. See? Everybody see it. Everybody see. I'm a tradition, right wing man. And after the everybody see it, I tell them, listen, maybe my explanation to reality is the truth. Society now is much more divided because this, the more strident voices, the more extreme voices, get much more of a platform now, thanks to social media, thanks to the fact that there are more news organizations, more, more television channels. There are, there are places where you can hear these voices, and the mainstream hasn't changed that much, but you hear, it's just seeping in. But, but, but you hear more of the extreme voices, you hear them loud. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. The new radicalism can also be found online. Are you serious? Are you serious, folks? A prophecy alert. President Donald Trump is about to fulfill biblical prophecy. Wow! For this American Christian evangelist preacher, the embassy move is a sign pointing to the end times and the coming of the Messiah. He's rolled out an ecstatic graphic in celebration. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Rabbi Yehuda Glick, great to have you on the broadcast today. It's an honor to meet you, sir. It's an honor. My honor. The honor is mine. These videos broadcast online from Jerusalem feature on the left Rabbi Yehuda Glick, a member of the ruling Likud party in Israel's parliament, who also attended Donald Trump's inauguration. And the man presenting these slightly surreal programs is Pastor Paul Begley from Indiana. Jerusalem will come under siege. There will be an attack. It will look like half the city has fallen. The houses will be rifled. The women will be ravished. It will look like it's almost over. And then there will be an earthquake that will hit the Mount of Olives. Hello, how are you? Oh, yeah. I wanted to know why the politician Rabbi Glick 
was hanging out with Pastor Begley. So what's it like when you're what this has to do with Donald Trump? Blick's a proud settler born in the USA. He survived a murder attempt and is now followed everywhere by bodyguards. Hallelujah! He's close to Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's had talks with Trump's son-in-law and envoy. Shalom, shalom. And have you met Jared Kushner when he's been here? I've met. Yes. You met Kushner? Yes. Jared Kushner is a good friend of Israel, and I think that they understand, the American administration understands that the state of Israel is here for good, and we're here to continue building, and anybody who wants to be part of it is welcome. And anybody who wants to fight us will do it with zero tolerance. The ruling Likud party has no better friend than President Trump's administration. But I want to know why the president's actions were being linked to biblical prophecy. Here we have, after 70 years of the establishment of the state of the world, the strongest king of the world recognizing Jerusalem. I mean, it's the not The strongest my... king in the world being who? strongest leader of the world today. His name is Donald Trump. So do you believe that the American embassy opening here almost exactly at the same time as the 70th anniversary of Israel's independence was prophesied? Do you believe that? It seems like that. Here we see a process step by step exactly as analyzed, prophesied by the prophets of the book. The hand of God is upon you the, the, without question. Pastor Paul Begley, tell me about him. He's another one of the pastors, the leading pastor, who has a big community. I'm connected with anybody who wants to be connected to the Word of God. Some people seem as quite dark. He's talking about Armageddon a lot and a bit of an oddball. Is it, it... I don't have to agree with everybody who I correspond with. Up the road in Jerusalem, I came across this scene. It turned out they were a British couple. What was that? What, was the, what, is, uh, what did you just sing? Our Father, our King, hear our prayer. That's in the English. Barbra Streisand. Barbra so That was in Hebrew? Yes. Do you want to sing one in English? Are we going to go? They were among a Christian evangelical group in Jerusalem to mark Israel's 70th declaration of independence. You know when Isaiah said 3,000 years ago that the Jews will, or the nations, all the nations will be streaming to Jerusalem. Rabbi Glick is building alliances among Trump's key support base, the Christian evangelicals, estimated at over 50 million in the US. He tells his audience how the American leader, like King Cyrus, is fulfilling prophecy. Cyrus, the king of Persia, recognizes Jerusalem after 70 years. And it's big business for Israel too. Christian evangelicals now number one in every eight tourists in the country. Among them, this woman from North Carolina. Tell me about visiting Armageddon. That's an important site for you. No, it is, it is. It's a difficult to envision what might happen, but there are so many people will be, will be destroyed because that's a war situation. People that's are going to be destroyed yeah, absolutely. in Armageddon here in Israel. That's correct, yes. But of course, that's not the whole story. In divided Israel, laid-back Tel Aviv has traditionally been a bastion of the liberal left. The political climate in Israel had darkened, and it really worries us. Dorit Rabinyan was one of over 6,000 who attended this nighttime rally for peace. Those gathered here still believe in finding a two-state solution to the conflict with the Palestinians. These Palestinians were only able to attend after Israelis fought in the courts to get them permits. Then came David Grossman, the novelist who lost his son in the Israeli-Lebanese war. He made a plea for peace. Im la Palestinim lo ye bait, gam la Israelim lo ye bait. There are hugs of friendship. 
Dorit Rabinyan, whose book about forbidden love between an Israeli and Palestinian was banned in Israeli schools, agrees with Grossman. The person I wrote the book to, the person that I dedicate my novel to, his family is still in Ramallah. And every morning of, of, of the Independence Day, I call them and I say to them again and again, year after year, that the day I'm going to be free to enjoy this holiday, this celebration of independence in Israel, is the day that they will enjoy their independence, that they can enjoy their flags hanging up in the West Bank and Gaza. I think that a lot of the people of the left because we live so many years in Europe, I think that they wish is to be like you. They want to be English, they want to be German, they want to be G French. European. Uh, European, yeah. They saw advance. They know to say Gita and Shakespeare. They're so sophisticated. Jewish. This old nation from the Bible with beard, this is not classy. Yes, this is exactly what they think. And I so think, think it's like cost a lot to Israel. As you know, around the world, many people still talk about a two-state solution. Many people is that speak, over? Speak, so many people speak about it. Is America. that gone? That many people speak about a Magadon, many people speak about a Palestinian state, many people speak about things but that are not connected to the facts. Come and see. A, a but do you think that idea is over? Is it gone? It, it's, it never was the, to begin with. In the end, it's all about home. And who gets to call which piece of land home? In Jerusalem's old city, in these ancient cloister streets, Life seems immutable. It is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. In one momentous move, Donald Trump has changed the rules of the game. To his Christian evangelical followers, he's a prophetic King Cyrus. To worship the and his king. voice Capital has joined the chorus from the radical right. Are you serious? Are you serious? And drowning out others. Laila Tov.